Hello, and welcome back to Riveting TV's showtime number four, our year. In part one, we looked at how scouting can go right and do well for yourself, get a lot of XP and pretty good whack of silver too. In part two, we showed how it can go wrong very quickly as a scout. You don't have much room for error. If you make a single mistake, dead. Even an ammo rack to the face in a low to... In part three, we're going to look at two replays sent in by you, the viewers. And I do want to remind everyone that you can send in your replays for analysing by me or Highflyer or both or whoever um, to rivetingtv at gmail.com. Now, we want to see your replays. We want to see when you're struggling. We don't necessarily want to see when you've got 12 kills and stuff because often in them situations, you're not playing particularly well. You're just laying back and taking advantage of a situation that's favourable for your tank. What's really impressive are the times where you can recognise that you can improve. That you make a mistake and say, what could I have done better? Or, I know I messed up right here, but uh, can, you, can you help me? Uh, the enemy team always does this against me, or a friendly team always does this. Send, us, send them in. We want to see them. We really do. We want to see how you guys are getting on, applying our tactics. Um, scout games. You know, send me scout games where you've applied what you've learned today and got better results for or where you're falling down flat. I would love to see them. So let's uh, jump in a game for seeing Monotomics. First game that he sent in to uh, Showtime. All right. Now let's have a look at the uh, tanks on both teams. We have a tier 10 fight. So he's in a T50-2. He's not going to be a fighter for this, obviously. Let me turn the sound on for water tanks because clearly I'm a noob. And we got to see what he can do here. There's only one artillery for both. So he's going to have to be a spotter for the tanks. He's got to make sure that he spots for their tanks to be able to shoot other people. That's a misconception that a lot of people have, that you can only be a scout for artillery. But it's not, not the case at all. You've got to make sure that you scout for your heavy tanks too, and your tank destroyers, and even your medium tanks and stuff, because they can take advantage of your line of sight. They can take advantage of it just as well as anyone else. Easy. So, let's see how what goes on here. Whoa, seems to have lost it. Okay, team is spreading out quite nicely. Bit thin down there, but it's a Conqueror and a VK, pretty good. 113 as well. Okay, now this is one of my favorite tactics as well. Head up to here, see the enemy coming over the hill and uh, reacting to what's going on. Often the enemy come around this corner, not really expecting a scout to be able to light them up. So it's nice if you see a really quick tank, light them up early and see their progressions. Over here, you've got some really good cover from every direction, as long as you resist firing. If you fire, you get revealed. Now, a really cool thing we can do here is with the free cam, have a look around. Now, how camoed is that, right? How camoed is that? Let's just, just, just remove the UI and have a nice look at this. Cool. Nice. You're not gonna get spotted, are you? That is really good. Oh, Christ. Easy to get nervous here, guys. Easy to get nervous. Two big tanks are moving past. How tempting is it to take a shot? How tempting is it to take a shot to their side armor right now? Just don't do it. Just don't do it. No, not even you. Don't do it. Just don't. Don't be greedy. Don't try and take the last shots and just take the XP from being the spotter. Right now, they think they're unspotted or in cover or whatever, but they're not. A WZ goes down there, but doesn't matter. Do not try and help. You can't help. You are helping. You're lighting the opposite. Look, that guy thinks he's safe. That type thinks he's really safe, but he's not. So let's go back to the tank and see what's going on here. Nothing. Oh, behind us. Still, stay still. There's no camera net here, guys. He is just naturally this stealthy. He's obviously got an engine upgrade. No, he's not got anything, actually. Because the engine upgrade would be displayed. But uh, yeah, he's not using the camo for large. He's not using the binoculars. But he's still doing static um, scouting because of the teams. He's seen the teams and gone, I have to do static scouting here. So he is doing it. He's tempted to take the shot, though. He's looking around. Tempted to take the shots. Don't do it. Let's fast forward the game a little bit and see if anything else happens. Okay, there are lots of enemies coming up here. Keep still. We're in a position where the the cover is not working well for them. Yeah, come on. Over here, they think they're absolutely in cover. Nothing could see them here, surely. 
We're totally in cover. Artillery couldn't hit us if they tried. Nothing can see us. We are totally safe, right? Look at these three. But why are we taking shells? So they're really nervous. They're not coming around for that reason. They don't know what's going on. They don't want to come out. Simple as that. So let's keep going. Ooh. What was that? Was that against me? Or was that not? Don't panic. Don't panic. Okay, that was a fluke shot. That was a fluke shot. It wasn't for me. It was for someone else. It was probably from an ally mishitting. Surely. Okay, good. Right, over there, our teammates are getting engaged. Still not firing. Still not suiciding for the enemy artillery, even though we can see most of the enemies there and there. Wait. It's really good patience here from Monotonic. Really good patience. He probably could move out right now if he wanted to. There's uh, a lot of teammates here, but look, he would have ran straight into the Type 59 and probably killed. Even though the Type 59 is badly damaged, he is no match for it. Any decent uh, Type 59 driver would take him out. And he's still being useful. He's still being very useful. There's no reason for him to move. Now, the Bat Chatelion is moving in against the AMX, and uh, we're seeing here that... Uh, it looks like the sniper's last shot wants to go down here, but it's not going to happen. And that's good. However, two more tanks spotted. IS-8. Look at it. He hasn't moved. All game. He's just sat there. Brilliant. I'm sitting there, and I'm earning lots of experience in silver. Not doing much. But he's doing so much for his teammates. He is just being there. The artillery is spotted now. We know where every last enemy tank is. So now's the time to move out. And there we go. I called it, and he moves out takes the shot. Boom, motherfuckers. And he does have uh, Sixth Sense. That's why he didn't panic earlier. And that's actually a point to freeze on. Sixth Sense will save you in that situation. That massive explosion that happens next to him, if you didn't have Sixth Sense, almost guaranteed. I know I would have thought that that shell came for me. It's a risk you have to take. With Sixth Sense, you know it wasn't for you. They didn't see you. You didn't fire, it wasn't for you. That one didn't go So awesome. Last thing left is artillery. Let's see if we can go get it. No, it's gone. But still, didn't do much. Fired two shots. Didn't do much with the shooting. But I bet you that was a high XP game. Uh, unfortunately, the replay system doesn't show bloody XP at the end, which is stupid. But um, if Monatomic's in the chat, he can, I'm sure, tell us how well he did there off of that game of doing nothing. Passive scouting for the win. That was really good. That was a really good replay. Thanks for sending it in. And it shows you that patience and the right skills for your tanks works for you. So that's really good. That's really, really cool. Let's have a look at the second replay we have today. Hmm. Um, Mad Mike. Mad Mike sent in a replay. And let's have a look at how he did. Hmm. Cool. How you feeling, guys? How you feeling? It's it's Tuesday. It's not Monday. It's Tuesday. It's midweek. Wednesday's tomorrow, the most productive day of the week because it's furthest from the weekend that you're not really going, can't wait for the weekend yet. And you're quite rested from the weekend, so you're kind of actually working. So Wednesday's pretty good. I like Wednesdays. Do you like Wednesdays? I like Wednesdays. Right, it's a tier 7 battle in a T50-2. Now, this is quite rare. In a tier 7 battle in a T50-2, you can kind of be a combat scout. And look at the light armor. Whoa, AMX 12 ton, AMX 12 ton, 59 16s, T20, E2, not really light from the front, but it's everywhere else. Um, the Yakpans are 4, you can get behind, the Easy 8. T wow, that's a lot of light armor. So, in this situation, you know you can be a bit more active. Um, you know you've got a lot of tanks that can keep up with you, so you've got to be a bit cautious, but generally speaking, you've got to be a lot more active. So, let's see what Mad Mike does. Straight out into the field. He's got to go for a high-risk early game maneuver. Now, this is extremely risky, but it can pay off if your teammates are ready. What Mike, Mad Mike could have done at the start of the battle, first thing I noticed, he didn't say anything. He didn't ping, really. Well, he did say something. But you've got to make more of an effort. You've got to make a huge amount of noise. Because look at the teammates. They're all driving off. None of them are really sat there. Look, you've got another scout that's actually coming. You've got two teammates lining up. That's not enough. If you died right now, which hopefully he won't. Whoops. If you died right now, and hopefully he won't, won't um, it would be for very little. Look at that. T another T-50 has come over and... Whoa, shit! Oh, my God! 
Holy tits, man. That was one hell of a turn at the last second to keep your head above water. Oh, you lucky man. Well done. That was awesome. They had a T50 H2 chasing you too. Lovely. What a, what a move. What a move. That, that's, that's an awesome play. But you've got to watch where you're going because that, my friend, is a VK. And that's a lot heavier than you. So that was freaking amazing. Big plays, man. Big plays. However, you've got to really be more communicative with your, with your teammates. Make sure that they are ready for that move and that they're ready to support you because I don't think much happened in the way of your teammates doing well. You lost three tanks, they lost nothing. So, yeah, as you saw, the other T51 in the field got killed. So you were incredibly lucky. It was cool, very fun, and I don't... I always say have fun, right, guys? Just have fun. But if you're trying to win, it's a bit risky. However, he's now um, adapting to the rest of the game, realizing that the hill's there. Remember, he's in a tier seven. He is heavy enough to be a fighter. And so he's actually trying to support. But the VK2801, as I've said, has tough armor from the front. Trying to snipe with the T50-2, unless you've got really clear shots on the side, probably is not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Okay, so. Sniping at long range with this gun is not the most ideal situation. But, you know, if you've got nothing else to do right now, then I guess it's not too bad of an idea. That one didn't go through. There's a lot of shells being used. Not much happening in regards to it. So, at this point here, you've got to look where the enemy are. There's a lot of camping. You've got an easy hit that's moved across. You've got teammates moving up here. That really wasn't needed. That's a lot of shells wasted. It, it wasn't going to do much. That was a long distance against an easy eight. You really would have just pushed up the hill or moved up into more scouting positions or even gone to harass him if you want to be more, a bit more suicidal. So let's engage on the hill where we know their light tanks are. Remember, this is a T-50-2 in a tier seven. So you're going to have quite a bit of firepower and survivability on top of this hill with two teammates. You've got a Cromwell there, you've got a VK with you, and the Tiger's not on top of the hill yet, but you are waiting too long. The Tiger's almost at the top of the hill. You've got to be worried about that VK. It's that derp cannon you're going to be scared of. Awesome, making the move. Right, on top of the hill. Now this is where he could have been a minute earlier. He could have helped his teammates push onto the hill a minute earlier, because helping against that easy eight was pointless. So here we go. Enemy armor is hit. We nailed them back. We nailed them back. Okay. Hill is taken. Now, the chat has pointed out that the removing of the cover from the long distance would have helped his teammates. And I agree to a certain degree that that would be okay. But I believe the T-50-2 has a really hard time destroying the cover. Um, I remember quite that it doesn't destroy it that easily at that range, especially. And see how effective he is if taking the hill. If he took the hill, they would have had a lot more issues to worry about. So it, it's a it give or take situation, but I would have rather moved up the hill myself. We didn't even scratch them. Okay. This sort of peekaboo play, I like. You're making the enemies look at you, trying to hit you. You're very agile to come out and take shots and move back again. Time yourself between their shots or just trying to lure their shots and then take shots is a really good way of um, annoying them and making them miss and shoot the ground. And then your teammates get free shots on them. So even if you can't actually hit the tiger and you can't actually hurt the tiger, doesn't matter because you're distracting it. And if it gets distracted like this, you're gonna pack it. The easy eight's going around the side. You can do the same. Let's actually try and take it out yet. Yeah. Watch where that cannon's going. Whoa, good. The other thing to watch out is the teammates. Over here are two teammates here, a 5916 star and a T20. Now, if his teammates are very good right now, you're probably gonna go down. Um, it's either that or the easy eight, but the Cromwell's there. It's very risky. I would have actually gone past the Tiger and engaged the T20. That's what I would have done. Distracted the two mates, using the speed to get these two guns off of your main guns that can kill the Tiger. But this is not bad. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Just alternative ways of thinking about it. Oh wait, and here he goes. He actually turns around, reads my thoughts, and aims for the T20. There you go. 
brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I totally agree with this move. Oh, unlucky with the shoot on the turret there. It takes him out. Brilliant. Okay. That's really good. Removing guns from the battle is incredibly important. Because the less guns they have, and the T20's got a great gun, the faster you can win, or well, the higher chance you're going to survive. So let's go back in and see how they deal with this. Cromwell's got very light armor. Get around the back of him. The enemy's doing the right thing, concentrating on the Cromwell, because I believe the Cromwell's got a better gun. And there we go. Awesome. Clean the hill up. Now that's what I was talking about. The T50-2 in this battle is a skirmisher, and that's a very, very good thing to do. Taking the hill, helping your teammates take the hill. Now, doing a few circles while you wait for your teammates to move up, also fantastic. He's just spotting by moving out and trying to spot down the hill. Remember, if you pop over the hill and get vision, get straight behind the cover again. Don't wait for enemies to turn up. Your scouting in World of Tanks happens regardless if you're there or not. If you go up the hill and back down again, the request of the server is already made that you want to scout there, and the information will appear after a couple of seconds anyway. Don't stick around waiting for it. There's no need. No need to stick around waiting for the information. Go up the hill, go down the hill. Don't stick around. It's going to come anyway. Really important to know the mechanics of the game if you want to really improve. I'm surprised how many little tanks are in this game, actually. Everyone's light. Oh, what a skid. I love sk skidding around in the T-50-2. It's so cool. And that the uh, the move of the month of almost uh, going into the water there is fantastic. Oh, shit. Surprise! <laughs> Even with the excellent view range of the T-50-2. Okay. Good view range of the T-50-2. The... Um, uh, Jagdpanzer IV was this close to him because of camo value of this area here. That's why this area is very dangerous and why it's also quite dangerous to stop and snipe because there's a good chance that these bushes are being hid behind and you are going to be spotted. So we'll see what he decides to do here. And a reasonable decision to make. Is he going to pay for it though? Yes, he is. He's not dead yet. That's what stopping does. Hesitation and stopping causes these sort of damages, but he's okay. He's getting up. The reason that I guess he stopped was because of the um, T... Uh, what was it? T-3485? Yeah, T-3485. Was able to shoot him if he, if he kept going. I would have done the Ring the Ring of the Roses. I would have gone a carousel around the side of him and gone back up the hill, not losing my speed, but that's just me. Sniping again on the IS, why not? If you've got lots of ammo, you don't mind the silver bill, you might as well take a shot. You never know if you get lucky. At the moment, you're not got the HP to do a suicide run, and you do have a decent-ish gun for the game. And that's a critical hit, so, yeah, it's going through. But there is um, one thing he could be doing right now, and he's shooting that bloody AMX 12-ton. you definitely go through that thing. But that's okay. Over-focusing on one target is not too bad. Now, the teammates are collapsing at the base, but you've not got many forces up here either. Kampanovka's like that, really. Uh, you get into this stalemate where it's a bit long, lot of long-range sniping, unless you have anyone with high HP that can do a run. The Cromwell could do a run, I guess, but uh, you've got to be careful. And I think they're doing okay by being careful. So let's speed up the replay a little bit and see what's going on. Bit of dancing. Okay. Taking a few more shots, the T-29 goes down to the enemy artillery because he pushed up and his teammates didn't. That's something to know. Your teammates pushing up and you don't respond, you are letting them die. But if they're being suicidal, don't go and die with them. There's no point in trying to protect someone who's being an idiot. Now, it's very debatable on this map whether he was being an idiot or not. However, I do think that the T-29 should have been sniping and the Cromwell or the T-50-2 should have been scouting. So let's have a look. Okay, let's speed it up. Now they are going to do the dash down the outside. No, the Cromwell's decided against it. And so he's decided against it. I mean, Mad Mike's... I'm not blaming Mad Mike for not wanting to do it if his Cromwell isn't. But the V... Sorry, the uh, AMX is trying to stay still, taking a shot. And he's going to go down to the Cromwell. That's the VK managing to uh, scare him there. The Hummel's been left alone, but that's okay. Now let's go forward. Come on, Cromwell. Go, go, go. The Cromwell here is being very cowardly. I would be going down here. 
clearly what Mad Mike wants him to do, but he's not. So let's see what happens. Oh! Right, the VK, they knew where they was, and they've all revealed themselves. But now the VK is completely on his own. Can we clean up here from a distance? Yeah, yes, we can. The Jag Panther. Gone. Nice shots. No. No, 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 no. What are you doing? You have much closer targets that you can definitely penetrate from a range. The IS is um, not something you want to be taking on right now. There you go. Much better. Like Good target. Right awesome. Right, that death was the Cromwell's fault. The Cromwell should have been in position and done a lot better there. He didn't do too badly, but the VK was at max health. That was the only tank that was at max health. So this IS, if it's driven by someone good, could be a huge problem if he makes sure he's protected from artillery. But the enemy artillery is about to go down. If he's... Oh, not unlucky. The Cromwell, though... Let's have a look what the Cromwell is going to be doing. Is charging into battle far too late again. But the IS has been hit by the artillery. And the Cromwell is going to go for it. I'm guessing that we have got the replay. The rest of the replay here. And the Cromwell is going to do the carousel around. Successfully around the Hummel. And take him down. So that means that the IS hopefully will be taken down now. He is over here. And the Cromwell is one shottable by the IS. If he's lucky. Cromwell checking that the artillery is ready before he does the dash. And that should be GG. IS hit the ground or was that the Cromwell? Nope. Both of them miss. Both of them miss again. But the IS is sitting still. Oh, the artillery misses. What's going on here? IS is actually not driven by very, someone very good. He's clearly not that talented. He's let the Cromwell get behind him. He's going down. Oh, wow, he is so lucky. The artillery is surely going to finish him off now. Wow. Okay, that was a bit of a cripple fight at the end there. But the Cromwell, I don't like the Cromwell. The Cromwell's actions in that game, although he got six kills, was very cowardly. He let a lot of his teammates die. And I bet you he's the sort of guy, if his teammates had lost the fight, would have raged at them. Uh, it kind of shines at that sort of player who hangs back, rely, relies on his teammates to suicide for him, and then he can snipe, and if his teammates die, then he goes, Oh, everyone's dead but me, because I was in the right place, you guys suck. Mm. I don't think they need, the game needed, needed to be that close. I think that they had it in the bag, and the Cromwell kind of lost it for them. But it was a great replay, showing some really good engagements, disengagements, and not sticking to any one line. Knowing when to retreat, when to go forward. Awesome. So again, I want to reiterate that we are now doing these analyzers on our shows uh, reasonably frequently. So please send in your replays of any moments, no matter what you're driving, that you are unsure of or you enjoyed or thought, I did really well here. I made the right decisions or even just a really exciting game like, like that last one from Mad Mike. So thank you very much for sending them in, uh, Monotomic and Mad Mike. They were fantastic replays. And I've been Dorjan and this is Riverteam TV. See you later.